blessings and blessings tribe from my uh, office in Playa Vista. I felt compelled, called, tapped upon to make this video because I, I share it with some of my clients, but I often don't share it uh, in public. And so I thought it was really important for me to share some of the steps. Hello, beautiful, good to see you. Some of the steps in which, uh, and the things that I've done to create uh, the type of financial abundance that uh, I was seeking uh, at that time and continue to seek. I think money, money and sex are two subjects that we sort of uh, shy away from collectively. Although we're always thinking about it, talking about it, stressing about it. Um, I think it's something that a lot of us, especially light workers, don't talk about because there's a taboo, there's a, 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 a conversation that, that is something to the effect of, I don't want to feel like a show off. I don't want to be the person um, uh, that, mm, what's the word, looks like an asshole. I'll say that. Um, but, you know, uh, in, in, in true fashion, as you guys know and you know of me, hello, Nicole, good to see you. Um, I feel like it's my duty to say the stuff that everybody isn't going to say and to teach and support and hold space and be a container for people to, yes sir, man cave, let's get it, be a container for people to really see themselves. Now I'm gonna start with a short story and then I'll go into essentially what I've been doing and what I continue to do. It's, you know, at the end of the day, I usually, I, I really only use one system um, and, and that system I, I weave and, 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 it, and, it, and it happens in different ways, but it's really just one thing. And so, some of you guys know, because you've been around long enough, that uh, when I met my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, or well, not even my girlfriend, I was really just, like we were like dating. Uh, I was 33, and I was uh, in a position financially where I had never made more than $60,000 ever in my life. And I'm gonna preface all of this conversation with it's not about the actual dollar sign, but the consciousness and the paradigm shift that is necessary for somebody to break generational cycles of bullshit that does not belong to them. And I was carrying my dad, his dad, his dad, and his dad's shit, and my mom's and her mom's and her mom's and her mom's stuff. So for me, as a 33-year-old, young, chocolate, African-American, Afro-amazing man, I felt it necessary for me to break the generational cycles of trauma and lack and limitation and scarcity such that I could be a beacon and a example for my child, his children, and their children. Send, like, like whew, let this land. There is an aspect of each of us that has, we, we're, we, it's called womb wisdom, right? We're like we've, we've carried in utero some of the things that don't serve us. Like not, not all of the issues you have are yours. You're carrying your great grandfathers. You're carrying that in yourselves. And so I, I thought it necessary for me to free myself and to really look at the areas where I was most afraid to look. Ha! Let that land. I decided to look in the areas to become curious and aggressive about going after the things that scared me the most. So if you're taking notes here, that's number one, the decision. I made the decision to really look and go, am I worth, am I worthy of more than $60,000 a year? Here I am, 33 years old, deeply talented, heart full of gold, like I actually care about humans. So what's the hang up? 
What's the holdup? What's really happening here? Ah, what's really happening here is that you're carrying somebody else's stuff. And so the first choice is to put some of that down and take a deeper look at what's trying to be uh, manifested through me, right? We all have medicine on our hearts, on our souls. We all have um, particular gifts, talents, and abilities that have been given to us, not to keep, not to hoard, but to give and to dispense to other humans, to other people, to the planet, right? I've, I've been really sitting in this question, what is being asked of me? And how deep and how powerful and how willing am I to sit in a yes? What does my yes look like? What does it feel like? What does it smell like? Is it a cannonball or is it one foot in? Is it one toe in? Where am I at in that process? Hmm. And so I decided to take a look. And during that process, I moved in with my mother. Right? So I took a few steps back. I, I utilized the nepotism, the container that my mother had previously created to assist myself in doing some deep work while simultaneously courting the, the, the woman of my dreams, right? So I moved in with my mom and uh, I start to I hire a coach. I start taking workshops. I start like diving deep, like really looking at stuff, putting myself in positions where my ego gets annihilated. And remember, a bad day for the ego is a really good day for the soul. And so my ego was being annihilated over and over and over again. However, my soul, the truth of me, was, was, was crip walking, was, was, was dancing in, in, in pure glory. And so I'm gonna fast forward. Um, in that process, I started to have realizations about who and what I really am. And, and, and not just about me, but about you too. I began to see the bigness of the God that I serve. I began to um, allow myself to experience the fullness of, uh, of gratitude for what I did have. I began to really look really look and experience what it feels like to move from all needs met. Like, hear me, let this transmission land in your body. All needs met. In this now moment, that's who and what you are. If you have a phone or a computer to watch this on, water to drink, food to eat, clothes on your back, Every need you actually have is met, check, check. And so when we, when we operate from all needs met, when we stand and, and embody that level of, of, of abundance, the universe can't help but to send that back at you. How many of you guys have ever been, type yes, if you've ever just had one of those days where you woke up on the right side of the bed, and there was an aspect of you that was just so on fire, so in love, so connected, so, so in your joy that other people kept reflecting it back to you. Amazing stuff just kept coming into your, into your vortex and you're like, whoa, I am on fire. Type yes if, the, if you've had that experience. And so for me, I, I began to look at this and notice it and go, ah, oh, there's something here. And then I start to look at nature and, and, and watch how it operates and go, ah, there's an abundance of air. The, the, the ocean doesn't try to, to ebb and flow, it just does, right? The flowers don't try to grow, they just do. And there's an abundance of it everywhere. And I start to understand that abundance was not a dollar sign or a destination, but rather a way of being, a, a way of operating in the world, in the minutia. I'm not just talking about when everything is going well, right? I'm not, see, so we get in the conversation of whether the glass is half empty or half full. I'm talking about the great fullness of knowing that you have a glass, the great fullness of really like letting it land that I have life, bro. Like what? Here, here, right? Uh, here today, gone tomorrow. And yet I'm here at this time in human history with the technology that's here and the, 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 the vitality that, to, to, to see my dreams come true. I'm like, what? Bro, what? 
Like, if you really let that land, your life will change forever. And that is what I do and be as much as I possibly can. And with all of that, I began to see and experience and work from this consciousness while looking at the details. I, I began to study marketing and business and things that also had me on my edge because I had a story when I was in my spiritual bypassing, really, uh, that um, those things were not of God, that, that to be connected and all of this stuff, I needed to only study this stuff. And so I began to look at the patterns of, of those who, who had enough course in their body around money around business, around marketing, around allowing themselves to be um, uh, compensated for what they do and be in the world. And I began to look at their of course, right? All of you, all of you have an of course in your body right now. All of you have something in you that says, yes, of course I can do that. Of course I can walk. Of course I can move my left hand. Of course I can drive to this. Of course I can play tennis. Of course I'm a great mother. Of course I can read. Of course you have of courses sitting in your body. And so I said, well, let me, let me look at those who, um, who, who have an of course around money around business and let me get in their in their sphere in their vortex let me pay them to work with them to 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 learn from them let me read what they read let me let me listen to podcasts books um um fucking uh excuse my cursing um videos everything i could get my hands on and let me actually hire them as coaches and so this brings me to number two if you really want to level up Environment is everything. Right now, I'm, 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 I'm in my office, and out here I'm seeing some trees, right? And these trees have something in common, which is a soil, an environment that is conducive for growth. Some of us, some of you, are operating from and 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 swimming in an environment that is deeply unhealthy and it is very difficult to grow like to the to the capacity that one can truly grow from if the environment is not set up for that right so the the, the condition of the soil determines the productivity of the seed the condition of the soil environment determines the productivity of the seed. So the seed contains the blueprint for the entire tree and yet the blueprint doesn't matter if the soil is not conducive for, the, for it to grow to its highest heights. Like, is this landing for you guys? What? Please type in the comments anything that is, is this landing? Like, like, like let it hit the heart chakra, like poof. So I began to put myself in environments that were conducive for growth, the highest heights of growth. I began to take workshops and hire coaches for 20,000, 90,000, like anything I could, I, any, I, would, I was, all the money I was spending on dumb stuff, I put into, I invested in me. I, I put it back in me. Is, is this landing? So that's number two. Number one, decision. Number two, get support. Create an environment. Number three, and this is where the game really started changing. I began to systematically prioritize my life based on a vision that was bigger than myself. So some of you guys right now, you're running around like chickens with your head cut off because you don't have a vision that is calling you forward. I began to say no to the good so I can say yes to the great. And success leaves clues. So you look around. You look at your life. Look at all the times when you've been in the pocket and ask yourself, what was I doing? What was I being? What was I having? 
What choices was I making? What, what environment was I creating internally? Was I drinking a lot of water or was I drinking Coca-Cola? Was I eating a bunch of crap or was I putting greens and things in my body that gave me vitality that created the space and the container for me to get into another environment, right? Because the, 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 the context determines the content and yet there are many contexts that we're swimming in, living in. This room is a context within a context of a building, within a context of a, a city called Playa Vista, within a context of a, of, of a city called Los Angeles, within a context of California and the world and the fucking universe. Ha! Like, let's get it, y'all. Like, the minutia, the details, number three, I began to say no, no, because your, your vision is, is, only, is only as powerful as your no. So I began to say no to the good so I can say yes to the great. And that is objective, subjective, right? It's, it's one of those things where you just know internally, I got the body hit, this is a no, this is a yes. Go this way, don't go this way. Just listening, discerning, listening. Truly listening. Three, threefold beings, body, mind, and spirit. Sometimes the body can be having a certain conversation while the mind is having another, while the soul is having another. When we bring those into alignment, we create magic. Huh. Huh. We become like the arrow. And so, that was number three. Number four is I started to really look at was what I was doing in that process. And then I started to look at other people and I used them as an example, not of competition, but of I began to celebrate their wins. Some of you are looking at people right now who you believe uh, shouldn't be there. I remember I used to judge this particular friend when I was an actor and I would say, well, how is he making it? He's a, a male slut. And I, and I had all these judgments towards him. And then, and then I saw this particular person do cocaine and I, and I was judging him instead of celebrating. And the moment I, I took that, that vibration out of my vortex people began to start celebrating me. I began to like have these synchronistic, random, but not random moments where people were, were saying, well, you know, I, I would love for you to write a book for us. We have a publishing house called Simon & Schuster, one of the biggest in the world. I began to be asked to speak on certain stages and do certain things. Me speaking for 6,000 people in Australia, what, four years ago? That was random, and yet it wasn't. And yet it was not. And so, using the human experience, because there's only one of us here, as a reference point to celebrate that which, you know, opens up a door for you, changes everything. And I'm going to leave you with this and I'm going to get off. The, the, the last thing, number five, and I sort of alluded to it, I believe in number three, but I'm going to say it in a different way. Success is sequential, not simultaneous. Success is sequential, not simultaneous. So if it's sequential, then one must ask themselves, what, what matters the most on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis? What matters the most? If I'm literally trying to move the needle from 60,000 to one million, which I did in four years, one must ask themselves, what matters the most on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, which will then affect and reach to and touch the bottom line a year from now. So my days are constructed 
based on that conversation. Like, I hope you can hear me. My days are constructed based on that. Here's the thing I'm most committed to. I have a lot of things in the pipeline. Right now, right now, I have 125, maybe 130 students in my coaching programs. Whether it is man cave, two man caves, two stretch 22s. We have um, about 100 people that just graduated in total from uh, Bridge and Extreme. We're creating a relationship course that comes out in March. We're partnering with Christine Hasler to create a coaching certification program. I have two, three one-on-one -on -one clients. There's a lot in the pipeline. Conscious Man Brotherhood is creating an event in Australia, a huge one. And yet, there is only one thing in 2019 that I am most committed to. And I construct my days and my weeks and my months based on that one thing. <sighs> Let that land. That's how I became a millionaire. Blessings and blessings. I love you all. This is a gift. I have nothing to sell you or move you into or anything like that. I really wanted to address something that many of us do not address. And yes, Brendan and anybody else who has read that book or worked with me and in, my, in the system that I teach amongst that, that's it. Just don't stop. Too many of us like, like get off track. Like you keep doing that, right? So we speak what we seek until we see what we said. And it's not just the speaking because everything is speaking. My actions are speaking. What I'm wearing is speaking. My hair is having a conversation with you. So we speak what we seek until we see what we said. The book is called The One Thing. Blessings and blessings. I hope this found you uh, in a beautiful place. Tag somebody, share it if it landed for you. Peace.